picture this. You have spent months, months and months writing, researching, collating, learning, changing before you finally submit your PhD application. After you've submitted your PhD application, you are waiting, 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 and more waiting until finally Huh? Okay, so you didn't land a PhD offer this time around and first of all I want to say I am so 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 sorry because you have been through that entire process worked so 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 hard to come out the other side and just be left with bitter bitter disappointment because that's what it is like you've worked so hard for this and it didn't turn out the way that we wanted to and that is what I want to make a video on today because I know that we have talked a lot about PhD applications what to do how to decide between PhD programs can Congratulations, yeah, you got an offer. And for those people that maybe didn't land an offer, all that's gonna do is make you feel worse. And I understand that because let's talk about a bit of personal story there. I have been there. I have been the person who was rejected from PhD application I applied for in my first year of applications. Every single one. We're talking like 12. Like that is a lot of people, not one offer. It's not like I had my dream program and I didn't get into that. No, I didn't get into any. I was like, oh, okay, we need to, uh, we need to rethink something. And I've also been the other side of it where I've been waitlisted like what is waitlisted what is that and we're going to talk about that in a little bit my cat has just jumped onto the table trying to steal my orange juice it's not for you you sit there so in this video i'm going to dive into how i dealt with being waitlisted what waitlisting is what you can do about it and how i kind of navigated my way around the waitlisted scenario we're then going to cover being rejected we all know what that is but i'm also going to cover how you can pick yourself up from that and how to how i went through that rejection process and how it helped me prepare for next year's applications if you decide you want to apply for next year's applications which is also another thing we're going to cover so the first thing we have to cover is waitlisting if you have been rejected rather than waitlisted then I'll put a little timestamp below to skip straight on to that rejected. <laughs> this sounds so sad for like, you know, whatever. This section is for the waitlisted section. So number one, what is waitlisting? Waitlisting when they want you, but you didn't quite make it on that much. So let's say they have a pile of people that they want to say yes to, but there's any, and in that pile, there's 20 people that they've been like, yep, 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 but they can only take 10 people. So they'll take those 10 people, put those other 10 people on the wait list. So it is an extremely good sign because you did not get rejected. So that is the number one thing I want to cover first. Like you didn't get rejected. Like they do want you, you are good enough. There is nothing wrong with your application. It is entirely dependent at this point on who else applied. Your application, your interview, everything, there is good enough you made it in it's entirely dependent on who else is there which is one thing that is completely out of your control so essentially there is nothing you could have done better really um, but it is still worth asking so when I received that little and I logged on to my little thing and I saw that I'd been waitlisted I was like hmm okay that's okay how can we deal with this it's not a no the first thing I did was a look for the positives you were not rejected yay this is good this is happy and people do get off the waitlist and the likelihood of you getting off the waitlist to be honest is relatively high depending on where you are in the waitlist and how many places they actually have because people are normally choosing between like a few schools so if someone says no and there is an extra spot then you will be pulled off the waitlist the likelihood of someone saying no is quite high because obviously people are looking at those different schools all the time however people often make more offers than people like they can actually like accommodate I know that like some schools do that. I don't know, but like that's just like my understanding. So whilst it is quite high that someone will say no, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you a spot and it is entirely dependent on like how many places the school can actually like fund anyway. So I kind of tried to figure that out. Second thing that I did was asked for feedback. So I immediately sent an email um, thanking the admissions teams for their decision, completely understand, really competitive program, yada, yada, yada. But I wanted if they had any feedback on like myself da, 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 in the interview process. Um, I also asked another few additional questions um, in that email such as where was I on the wait list? That was important to me. If I was like 10th on the wait list, like the chances aren't that high. If I was first on the wait list, the chances are a little bit higher. And I wanted to know that for my own peace of mind. And when do people make their final decisions? Because ultimately you're gonna have to wait until that time before you're gonna know whether you're pulled off the wait list or not. And that's gonna kind of be the like set deadline. Especially as an international student, you have a million and one other questions and things that you need to sort out. It's not like you're just moving across the country here. You need to sort out this whole visa thing, get your passport renewed like all of these things that takes time that takes months like the bureaucracy the paper 
that takes forever. We can't be doing that within like a month. We need to know, we need to know sooner rather than later. But anyway, those were like other things that were kind of going through my mind. So another thing that I do want to say that I did, and I don't know whether this is rightly or wrongly, probably wrongly, and I know there's a lot of people who are going to disagree with me on this. I um, sent them a follow-up email, um, like maybe a week or two later. I can't remember how far along it was. It was a little bit of time later, like after that initial email decision, just sort of checking on the status, whether anything had changed and just re-stressing my interest in the program because I also think it's quite nice because then your name crops up, people will remember kind of who you are and be like, oh yeah. But it also does have the potential to backfire if it's not phrased correctly uh, because people will think you are annoying, naggy, persistent, entitled, all of these terrible negative things. So it definitely has to be worded correctly and it's definitely a difficult one to navigate. Um, but yes, that is something else that I did when I was waitlisted. So now we've talked about kind of the practical things that I did in terms of like the actual college situation with being waitlisted or the things that you can do when you're being waitlisted. I kind of want to talk about the how I dealt with like the actual period of time that I was waitlisted. Number one thing that I did was distracting myself. I know this is obvious, but it's really hard and sometimes it is not that obvious when you're actually in that position and in like it's so hard to get out of your own head and be like, okay, let's zoom out. So I did a lot of zooming out. I really threw myself into my work, my job. I then started getting excited about other opportunities like kind of tried to come make my peace with the fact that yeah I'm waitlisted like there's nothing wrong with me like really switching to that positive mindset and also thinking of things that I could do if say I wasn't successful and say I didn't get onto that PhD program like throwing myself into applying for other programs or like looking into the other schools that maybe you did get an offer from or that kind of stuff so um, that was definitely one thing that I tried to do to keep myself positive and distracted another thing that I did um, kind of ties into this mindset change that everyone I know there's going be people who are not going to enjoy this and they're going to think it's rubbish but I'm a strong believer in the power of manifestation I really visualized myself getting the acceptance and getting into the school in my head I've, ma I've manifested a lot and I really feel like anyone who's not familiar with manifestation number one read the book the secret I'm going to link it below that's also one thing I did I read that book and I really like started manifesting it was recommended to me by a friend this isn't really a book club I don't know why I'm discussing this but genuinely like I, I found that this like waitlisting period was like it was really frustrating for me like I did not enjoy it in the slightest um so having like this like mindset change and reading these books and stuff like really did help me so I'm like I'm gonna link it below take what you will if you don't really like this kind of positive mindset rubbish then you could re-watch the first bit of the video but now we're moving on to the rejection stage of this video oh if you've just linked here from the beginning of the video then welcome to the rejection stage of this video if you've followed me through the waitlisting start section of this video then welcome also to the rejection stage of this video if you have been rejected again i am so sorry like this is soul crushing heart wrenching i know i have cried many 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 tears about being rejected from colleges as an undergraduate being rejected from phd programs being rejected from masters pro being rejected from everything that i ever wanted to get into not everything like that's being dramatic but like you know when you really want to get into something and then you get rejected and it's just kind of a big sad cry tear but number one let yourself be sad experience that mourning period i would say that that is yeah but don't let it go on too long. I really found that switching the mindset to, yep, yeah, I wasn't successful this time, this time was like the key phrase for me, was really, really helpful. Not I wasn't successful and I'm never gonna be successful at this. No, it was this time. Especially if it's your first round of PhD applications, like it is an incredibly difficult process to navigate, as you know, like it takes a lot of work and I'm not saying that you're not good enough. That's not what I'm saying. And this is not what they're saying either. It's not a reflection on you. It's again down to who else applied, like what the program in particular is looking for, like you just don't know. So this ties into the number one practical thing that I did after rejections was I asked for feedback from every single school. If you got rejected after an interview, then it's probably more likely that they will be willing to offer you feedback. If you got rejected straight out, it is less likely, but it is still worth asking. The reason it's less likely is because they have so many applications and if they were to go through, like I'm right everyone, like it would take them forever however i would definitely ask and nine times out of ten people will give you quite useful feedback so that is definitely something to do while it's seeking feedback from the school itself like also seek feedback on your personal statement and stuff from like a trusted professor or like
like a senior friend that you knew who's like in a PhD program, I don't know, like someone like that just to read through your statement of purpose, personal statement, research experiences, that kind of stuff, just to give you a bit more of a fresh perspective on that. I know that we did that a million and one times during the application process, but again, a fresh pair of eyes, your fresh perspective like, is definitely gonna be useful for getting feedback. After having got some feedback, hopefully some useful constructive feedback, the other thing that I did was I really started the re-evaluation process. So the first thing to do was yet yeah, to tick off that, yep, yeah, we've got that feedback, that's great. The second thing to do was to sit down and think, is this actually what I want? I am a big, big, big believer, as I really touched upon earlier, of like manifesting and thinking positively and everything happens for a reason. All of this, I know that some people are gonna say it's rubbish, please don't hate me, like, I, that's just me, I'm sorry. Sorry. So I'm very like, okay, if I was projecting from this, like maybe it's not meant to be this year. Maybe there's something else I'm supposed to be doing this year. Like maybe there's gonna be a bit of redirection. So I really spent time reevaluating my choices, the programs that I applied to, the research interests that I had at the time, whether there was anything else I wanted to learn in that new year that I had now, and whether a PhD was something that I actually wanted to do. Because now is the chance. Like you can easily redirect this. You could do a master's instead. You could get an internship. You could go get a job in internship. Industry. Again, going back to your why and why you actually want to get a PhD was really, really, really useful to me at this point. I then put this together with my sort of feedback list that we had curated earlier and create a list of actionable, actionable, intentional steps that I could take between then and the next application deadline to really put myself in the best position for me that I possibly, possibly could to apply for a PhD program. Um, I'm going to do an entire video on the things that I did leading up to my second round of application. So if you are watching this and you are set that you do want to do a PhD, I highly, highly, highly recommend. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to my channel. And that is the exact roadmap that I followed. The first unsuccessful batch of applications to the second very much more successful batch of applications. I then uh, really again focused on this positive mindset and if you were with us for the waitlisting video then that's exactly what I did. If you weren't there for the waitlisting video I'm going to put a timestamp because I'm not going to repeat myself for the people, you know, I'll just put a timestamp there. It's got some good book recommendations and exercises I use to kind of try and like switch my mindset and manifest living positively in this area of rejection and weightless station. Oh, so there we have it. That was kind of my journey through rejection and waitlisting and how I dealt with it, how you like sharing some of the tips to maybe help you guys deal with this horrendous period. Again, I am so sorry. This is the worst. I hope that this video has helped you feel a like, a little bit better about the whole thing because it's just kind of like, you're not alone. Like this happens. Like you're not the only person on the planet that's been waitlisted. Not to be like, oh yeah, I don't know why you're worried. You're not the only person. Like to be like, we're in this together. It is possible to like rise up from these terrible ashes and become the PhD student of your dreams. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below to like, just share your experiences and your stories and how like you dealt with rejection um, because everyone gets rejected. It's true, it like it happens. Like no one is successful all the time. So I'd really like to hear like your guys' tips because I'm gonna get rejected again in my life and we're here for that, you know? So please share that below. Um, if you're new here, then please subscribe to my channel. Woo, because we, um, if you wanna see more like PhD related, tips, content, that kind of stuff. Um, and I will see you guys all next week for another video. Bye.